I know we often feel like it's taking God a long time to come through with that breakthrough that we're waiting for, but it is good to remember that God knows what we don't. And if it hasn't happened yet, there is a reason. That's why Paul wrote in verses one to three, as long as the heir is a child, he differs in no way from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. Instead, he is under guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So Paul says that this is a picture of what it was like for you and I before Jesus came. We were slaves to the spiritual powers of this world, the elementary principles of this world. We were all slaves to the power of sin, every one of us. For Gentiles who were not under the law, they were under the guardianship of the elementary principles of this world and the Jews were under the guardianship of the law. So Paul's essentially saying, He's telling the Galatians that if they go back to the law, now that they have salvation in Christ, they're going back to being a slave. He's saying, why would you surrender the benefits and the freedom and grace for all the regulations and restrictions of bondage under the law? Why would an heir, once they've gained full possession of all their father's goods, ever want to return back to their previous guardianship? Why would one who has come into full sonship through faith in Christ ever wish to return to the confinement of the law? Paul was saying that in Jesus, the Galatians were fully a part of God's family. They didn't have to adopt Jewish customs or laws in order to be part of God's family. Both Jews and Gentiles are all one family in Christ by faith, not by becoming Jews. Now, I do want to take a moment to tell you that Paul was never saying that the law was a bad thing. After all, it was God's law. It couldn't be bad. But God gave the Torah for a specific time and for a limited purpose. So the law was a placeholder basically for the Jews until Jesus came. And when Jesus came, God intervened in history to fundamentally change our relationship with Him. Because of Jesus, we are no longer slaves, but we have received adoption as sons and heirs. Now, I know you might think that phrase sounds weird. If you're a woman, I get it. I'm a woman. And when I read the word sons, I think, well, what about me? What about my daughters? Aren't we included in this family adoption package? Well, of course we are. This wording, it's not a gender issue. It's a legal issue. In biblical times, it was the son who legally received the inheritance from their father. And so this phraseology makes total sense in that context. Men and women, boys and girls, are all classified as sons through faith in Jesus. This is a legal classification. Sonship means we have a legal stake in the inheritance of the father. Now girls, this means every single one of us as well. Paul goes on to say, when the time came to completion, God sent his son born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those under the law. So that, I love the so that's in the Bible, so that we may receive adoption as sons. I love that phrase. When the time came to completion, I wanna remind you, I want to remind you today that God is the God of perfect timing. I know we often feel like it's taking God a long time to come through with that breakthrough that we're waiting for, but it is good to remember that God knows what we don't. And if it hasn't happened yet, there is a reason. We know that our God is good and that He does good and that He will work all things together for our good and for His glory. So I want to encourage you today not to give up believing God when you're still in the middle. Keep hoping, keep believing, keep praying, keep expecting. God's always faithful to us. Now, of course, when God sent Jesus, It was the time he sovereignly chose to act. But when we consider the historical and cultural conditions of that time, it's truly astounding. The world at the time had experienced a technical and social revolution that made it perfect for Jesus to come to the earth. The world was united under Roman rule, something called Pax Romana, which means Roman peace. The world spoke a common language, which was Greek, of course, of course, making communication much easier and roads lined the Roman Empire, making travel and commerce available in a way that had never previously been possible. So it was just the right time for Jesus to come. When Jesus came, He was born under the law to redeem those in slavery under the law. Now that word redeem means to buy back, to buy something back or to set free from captivity or slavery. So I want you to understand, Jesus literally 
brought us back from slavery under the law. Jesus became like we are so that through faith we might become like He is. He took our sin so we might receive His righteousness. He took our shame that we might inherit His glory. After Jesus had come in the fullness of time, the law had done its work and it had served its purpose. In Jesus, we are adopted into the family of God. We have all the rights of being His children. I love it. Paul writes in Romans 8, verses 16 to 17, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with Him in order that we may also be glorified with Him. Now, do you realise that adoption is the highest privilege that the Bible offers? I don't want you to miss this. Adoption is the highest privilege that the Bible offers because in Christ and because of Christ, God takes us into His family and establishes us as His children and His heirs, as adopted children of God, we share with Jesus all rights to God's resources. I know it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. Adoption is at the heart of the gospel. God could have used any metaphor to explain how He saved us and how we became part of His family, but He used this intimate metaphor of adoption to show us that He actually chose us He doesn't simply tolerate us. I want you to know someone needs to hear this. God's just not tolerating you because He has to. He willingly chose us to be His children because He loves us. You know, I remember my mum telling me the story of the day that they found out they could come to the hospital and pick me up that I had been born. My grandmother received the phone call from the hospital and my mum was visiting a neighbour a couple of yards down and My grandmother ran outside to the backyard and she started yelling, we have a girl. We can go and pick up our girl. We've got a girl. You know, my parents chose me. They wanted me. I wasn't second best for my parents. The choice to adopt me was sequentially second. That's true. When they found out they couldn't conceive a biological child, but that didn't make me secondary. I wasn't second choice or second best. Adoption in God's mind was not plan B, a second best option for us. The Bible teaches us that He predestined us for adoption before the creation of the world. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 to 6, we read, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him in love, He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace, with which He has blessed us in the Beloved. Adoption was not second best. It was planned from the beginning of time. When I was adopted in 1966, the adoption laws in Australia were such that you had to adopt a child of the same nationality and the same religion. But the beautiful thing about being a part of being adopted into God's family is that our spiritual adoption is not based on our ethnicity or social class or gender or how good we've been or how many mistakes we have or haven't made or how many good deeds we have or haven't done. God welcomes anyone and everyone into His family. That is incredibly good news. Because of Jesus' life and death and resurrection, we all have been invited into God's family as His children, as His adopted children. And as His adopted children, we have a family blessing. We have a name, we have a relationship, we have a future, and that's where our identity lies, in Christ. That's where our significance and our security lie, in Christ. God wants us to experience the intimacy and privileges that come from being His child. God's not a cold, distant, aloof, angry or tyrannical father. I know some of us, that's what we may have experienced with our natural father. So we think that's what God is like. But He is a loving father that has adopted us into His family and made us joint heirs with Christ. I encourage you today, Step up and into the arms of your loving heavenly Father. You are His son. You are His daughter.
in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. I hope you'll share your thoughts in the comments and if you feel led, please share this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks so much for watching.